a quick summary of this presentation is a couple of videos released by official government agencies with little or no rational explanation other than fakery, trickery, deceit, and is quite important for the public to see. All the links are provided for these videos. You can either search them by their terms in the YouTube page or you can use the direct links. It's up to you. This first particular video is directly from the official NASA Johnson YouTube page and let's get started. Let's go to space. What do you say? Oh, let's do it. All right, here we go. The astronauts of the uh, shuttle Atlantis are making history right now on the shuttle's last mission in space. You know that. And they are about to join us live. In fact, I think we have them at the International Space Station. And there they are. Hey. Just, just floating there. Hi, welcome to Philadelphia. Hey, it's, uh, it's great to be here in my hometown of Philly. How you doing? I'm telling you, I've done a lot of these interviews, well, a few of them from space. The technology now is amazing. The picture, guys, you look like you're in a studio, maybe in Omaha, Nebraska or something. The, the, the shot is so clear. Is this a hoax? Are you really in space still? Is this a hoax? Are you really in space still? See the hair? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to have to do something for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to do it. Oh, yeah, I can do that. Watch this. <laughs> can everybody float around for us? That was really cool, Chris. Other than Sandra's obviously hairsprayed or gelled hair, here is a high zoom view of where Douglas's hand is about to be as Chris finishes this flip. This strange instance is interpretable two different ways. Either Douglas is grabbing an invisible micro cable suspending Chris, or Douglas catches the pocket of Chris with the tip of his pinky. Though because Chris is already landing the flip, it is unclear why Dougie reaches over at all. Although a lot more simultaneously happening. Is this a hoax? Are you really in space still? As Chris flips, Rex sees something off camera and begins grasping towards it. His grasp is delayed momentarily to avoid getting kicked, and during this delay, Sandy notices the same thing off camera and actually says something for her colleagues while reflexively pointing. Obviously something urgent is going on. For anybody looking at Sandra's floating necklace, thinking this guy is nuts, it's a coincidence, it's zero-G, dude. Yeah, the next video shows a zero-G object undoubtedly faked. So the next video is from the Canadian Space Agency, and it's of Hadfield brushing his teeth for us in what is supposed to be outer space. So now I have a nice, wet toothbrush. Good? So I'm partway there. Got my toothbrush wet. Now I just need to put some toothpaste on it, on it and uh, get cleaning my teeth. So I'm going to suck the water off it because where else would it go? Nice wet toothbrush. Grab some toothpaste. We just use standard toothpaste in space. Squeeze a little on, not too much because you're going to have to clean it up later. Okay, so there's my toothpaste on my toothbrush. It's wet. It's ready to go. It's loaded. Brush my teeth just like normal. <laughs> Get them all, especially the ones in the back. You should brush your teeth for about as long as you can sing happy birthday. That should be long enough. Okay, so now what am I going to do? I've got a mouthful of toothpaste stuff. i got a dirty toothbrush. So for clarity, this video is fast forwarded and I'm not fast forwarding it. It's actually part of the video. So 
our primary focus is this bag in the background because this bag is not always fast forwarding in tandem with Chris. And this proves that this bag is composited in on a separate video track with separate properties, proving that this is a zero G faked object similar to how Sandra's zero G necklace is faked. Were this bag actually part of an original video and not composited in, it fast forwards in tandem always when the video is fast forwarded. The third exhibit is from the STS-113 post-flight presentation. The presentation is supposed to be footage from the cameras on board the space shuttle, which were archived on videotape. And, and Paco being the, the policeman with the checklist, making sure we accomplish everything. So a basic visual principle is occultation, when a foreground object obscures a background object. So this solar panel array here is not obscured by the foreground object, placing the solar panel array of the International Space Station, allegedly, inside the interior frame, inside the window, inside the space shuttle, okay? And without illusory image compositing, this won't happen. So a little history lesson on blue screen is very helpful for understanding what's going on. So blue screen isn't common knowledge. So a blue screen is a method of combining multiple recordings together to make one believable and seamless environment. Blue screen not only allows creating incredibly large vistas out of incredibly small studio sets, it also allows compositing full-blown objects or lens flares or other special effects into the scene as well. Blue screen has been around a long time. Blue screen is used for automating the creation of travel mats. Travel mats are black and white silhouettes used for masking off sections of the same frame of film. Travel mats are created by filtering light from film positives and negatives using an optical printer by filtering color and flip-flopping between black and white high contrast film and color film. That creates the holdout mat. Anywhere that is black is not exposed and anywhere that is white is exposed because on film white is transparent because the bulb of the projector is the white light. When the reverse of the mats are overlaid, the difference between the two mats is visible and this gap is sizable and adjustable for a seamless fit. Anyway, the composite is unperceivable when the gap, lighting, and scene contrast are done within the variable margin of error. This is how the space station transposes the window frame. The mat is not sized correctly. And we can see mistakes in blue screen, such as in 2001 A Space Odyssey, where the stars actually are transposing this spaceship because they're shot at different times and there's an error in the mat creation. And it's not the technology to blame. It's the cost of the film and the skill of the technician. Twelve years earlier, Forbidden Planet puts out these perfect composites. The spaceship and its shadow on the ground are perfect. Obviously, it's not a hyper-realism film. That's an art style. That's a choice. And for whoever it concerns, this light bleed here, no, that's not digital compression. That bloom is Hallmark videotape. Blue screen compositing on film and digitally are principally the same. And almost no one knows blue screen has been around far before the moon landings and have no idea the extensiveness of blue screen and the trickery and the deceit capable using blue screen. Early forms of blue screen are visible in films from over 110 years ago, like this one in 1913. That's before blue screen is even said to exist. And since we're speaking on the history of visual effects, let's touch briefly on rear screen projection and how powerful it is for illusory, deceptive imagery. 
Rear screen projection is when an image is projected on the back of a screen, so when you stand at the front of the screen, the image is undistorted. The lights can be practically turned off with rear screen projection, which enables lifelike colors, and lifelike colors means creating deceptively lifelike imagery. Spherical screens are generally built to whatever size is needed, and the footage you're looking at right now is actually a curved LED screen. And curved LED screens do have benefits because they can be used in much brighter rooms, and they take up a lot less space because there are no projectors. However, they both have comparably deceptive results. Now, you don't have to take my word for it because this here is an actual 360 degree panoramic rear projection system. Yeah, rear screen's been around a pretty long time, and please consider spending perhaps a weekend, maybe two, on the CIA reading room and search some of these terms, rear projection, electrophotographic processing techniques, and optical printer. And it won't take very long for noticing that the military was researching counterfeit image creation day in and day out for years. And after noticing how much information is whited out, sanitized, or completely denied for obsolete imaging equipment from over 70 years ago, it might become sensible that Hollywood is not a good baseline for where military counterintelligence was at the time. Outside of the context of this video, it is really easy not noticing these details, and not a whole lot of people have seen this. Hi, I'm Noah. I'm in second grade. Could you show a somersault right now? Wow. He's not a farmer putting on his suspenders. He's not looking up at the stars. Either this guy's hanging from micro cables or man, quite a quite a good set of suspenders he's got on. That we wish that were the case, and I think cosmetically maybe we look a little bit younger if we have, I think, fewer wrinkles sometimes because we have this upward shift of everything without gravity pulling our skin down. But realistically, there actually is a toll on our bodies physiologically and medically, and that's part of the reason why all these experiments are so important. We have seen certain physiological systems like our our um, arteries, for example, do age faster up here than they do on Earth. So it's really important that we keep gravity pulling our skin down. But realistically, there actually is a toll on our bodies physiologically and medically. And that's part of the reason our bodies physiologically and medically. And that's part of the reason our bodies physiologically and medically. And that's part of the reason our bodies physiologically and medically. And that's part of the reason our bodies physiologically and medically. And that's part of the reason physiologically and medically. And that's part of the reason physiologically and medically. And that's gravity pulling our skin down. But realistically, there actually is a toll on our bodies physiologically and medically and And what is the most fun thing about being in a zero gravity space? Totally floating, of course. Here, we'll uh, give you a demonstration. I'll be right back. I hope that looks fun because it's really, really a lot of fun.
Jessica does not hit the ceiling. The ceiling at the center of the room is vaulted, and she is aligned with the hole above her out of frame. Being closer to the camera shrinks the distance for leaving the frame, and the distance for exiting the frame shrinks more at a higher zoom. The top of this banner is at the same height as the lowest ceiling. At most, the highest point of her bottom or back is touching the lowest ceiling in the room. The lowest ceiling is only at the sides of the room. And this isn't zoom added in post-production by me. This is in-camera zoom by them. I hope that looks fun because it's really, really a lot of fun. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans in living and working on the International Space. This has certainly been interesting and educational for all of us. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans in living and working on the International Space Station. This has certainly been interesting and educational for all of us. All right, go ahead and stay your line. 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 Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans in living and working on the International Space Station. The next exhibit is from an independent archival of the first Chinese spacewalk. They need to have good cooperation and faith in each other. The anomaly accelerates as it travels away from the suit. Underwater air bubbles have the same behavior. And this happens nearly eight minutes after exiting into what is presented as the heavens above us. For me to believe that this is being recorded in anything other than an underwater pool is harder than believing world-leading tyrants are lying to me. The next exhibit on NASA's sister subsidiary channel is an archive from a direct feed videotape recorder of a digital transmission and live broadcast from Donald Pettit. Uh, until the whole bag is drained. Ah, good to the last drop. Now, discovery. And that's uh, the end of the video. I wanted to share that uh, with you, a, a little discovery we made uh, by. The video compression of this archived recording is multifaceted, and only the first two are actually pertinent. For simplifying, after the video is recorded in camera, the video signal is compressed before transmitting to mission control. And compression before transmitting the video is necessary because of the purportedly low internet speeds. Hi, I am Shalmik in the fourth grade. Do you have internet in space? Yes, we do have the internet in space, but the internet that we have in space is really, really, really slow. 
So we don't spend a lot of time on the internet. Um, we spend most of our time maybe looking out the window, looking at our beautiful planet, uh, taking pictures, uh, floating around the space station. Uh, but we do have things that are sent up to us so we can watch movies up here as well. And we have a great telephone that we can use to call our family and friends. But yeah, the internet is uh, it's a little bit slow for us. After compression, the color information is stored as though drawing on paper with a pen. You can tear the paper, but you are not taking the ink out of the paper without losing the image structure. The spectrum detailing the coffee separates from the geometry of the cup when the signal is disrupted, and because the feasibility of streaming raw file format motion picture is unpractical because the file size is enormous, too big for real-time streaming, even today, on any type of internet considered slow or normal or anything short of multi-gigabit internet, for me to blindly believe this is compression artifacting is asking for faith. Or more simply, the coffee is on a separate layer than the cup in video manipulation production file format. One of the things that we have that probably not uh, obvious to most folks is uh, uh, we have ammonia masks. Uh, the, the, the external systems are cooled uh, with ammonia, and then there's heat exchangers that that uh, transfer the heat with a uh, with a water loop. One of the things that we have that probably not uh, obvious to most folks is uh, uh, we have ammonia masks. Uh, the, the, the external systems are cooled uh, with ammonia, and then there's heat exchangers that that uh, transfer the heat with a uh, with a water loop. But if you can make out some of the land masses, you could recognize them. And then the other way is we have a computer program that, that uh, displays our trajectory on the world. So here is the actual harness suspending the magician from his suspension rig. The choice is before you. Repent, become a fool of the world, and submit your whole life, love, and worship for Jesus, the one true God and Father of all creation. Or continue onward worshiping images in the sin of the devil until Jesus returns one last time. Even 
that pierced his side. Cried Jesus saves, Jesus saves. The message of his arms stretched open wide was Jesus.